Okay, so today I'm doing parts to uh, convert a Blodgett oven to from natural gas to propane. Okay, so the process that I'm going to do here is reversed if we were doing it in the other direction. However, I am going from natural gas to propane. Now, obviously, you know, to change an oven over, one of the components that you're going to be changing are the orifices. So that's what these are. Okay. So as you can see, you know, the natural gas one here is bigger. Okay. And then the one, that one is smaller. And I had to drill that. So we stamped it. Okay. So these parts are going to go where the flame, you know, where the flame is going to be produced. And, but this is not the part that we're concerned with today. What we're going to be focusing on is the gas control valve. Okay. So these are called gas valves, gas control valves. There's a number of words, uh, there's a number of names for them. And typically they'll be made by companies like Honeywell. Here in North America, they're going to be made by companies like Honeywell, Robert Shaw. But you will see some other players in the game or in that space, uh, like Basco, Asco, White Rogers, you know. But the most common that you're going to see on commercial stoves is either going to be Honeywell or Robert Shaw controls. So to do the conversion, uh, well, first of all, this, this is a, con so it's called a control. It's not called a regulator, even though the regulator is part of the function of what this is. As you can see, you know, there's a diaphragm in there. Okay. This is a diaphragm. This shows the flow of direction. Okay. So the gas is going to flow from here to in. So that's the inlet. That's the outlet. Okay. But it's actually a multiple function device. It is a regulator, but it's also a pilot generator this is a pilot orifice here okay so you can see the little holes here okay the gas comes out of there you know it gives you a nice little pilot flame okay but also it will not allow you to turn on the oven without there being some type of flame force or flame source in the oven present so it has a uh, a pilot generator okay well this is a pilot generator it also has a thermostat that goes from a point in on this on this device which is right here okay it goes from there it's not on there right now because the, the the person who sent this to me took it off but anyway there's there's actually a you know uh, a thermostat that comes from there it ends up being in the flames of this to verify that this pilot is actually lit. Otherwise, if you turn on the stove and there's no pilot there, you know, you're going to have an explosion because you're going to have an oven full of gas. And so it's designed to prevent that. Okay. Now it also has an on off device. So, you know, you can turn it from on to other. It's right now it's in the on position and you know, that's off. Okay. So obviously to get it going, you have to light the pilot. Okay. Uh, some of these systems, there'll be, you know, there'll be a spark generator, it'll light the pilot, then it'll verify that the pilot's lit, then it'll allow you to start the oven. If there is no pilot lit, the oven will not light. That's what this is all about. You'll see this in all commercial kitchens and all commercial devices. Uh, you know, devices in commercial kitchens require a pilot light so that they have something to light the main flame off of. It's the standard of the industry. That's the way it's driven, okay? So, in order to convert this from natural gas, which is where it's at right now, to propane, you have to change a couple of things. I've already talked about the orifices, okay, so that's going to be where the actual flame comes out and, you know, the cooking is done, right? But these aside, the parts on these that need to be changed are the regulator, okay? And if you look right here, this little screw right here, that is actually a there's a spring under there that controls how much th that regulator is rated at okay so in this case it's natural gas right now we're going to change that out okay and the other thing that needs to be changed is this the unique thing about this control is that once you have the pilot lit you have a control that will adjust you know how big or small this flame is coming out of the pilot generator okay the place to, that that occurs is right here underneath this screw. Okay, so can we just pause it for a second? Okay, so so I was talking about you know the, the control for this, uh, which will control how how big or small that flame is. The reason you want to control that is because if it's too big, you're going to get soot. Okay, and soot's going to build up on the con on this, which is actually the replacement for that. Now, if you notice. 
Uh, you might not be able to see it, but the holes in this are smaller than the holes in that. That's because this is propane, that's natural gas. So this is going to get replaced, okay? In fact, we're going to do that right now. So that's one of the things that gets replaced. So this guy comes off. This one already has this part, but we don't need that part, okay? We're just going to replace the top of it. Now, typically, you'll put uh, you'll put tape on there also. Oh. I had this. By the way, this is a ferrule. You're going to crimp that on there if you decide to clip this off, but we don't need to do that. It already has a ferrule on it. Okay, and this is going to go on here. And, you know, ideally you're going to want to put a little bit of uh, gas tape on there. So now we've replaced this. Okay, so uh, I was talking about how to control this. So that control for this is actually underneath this screw right here. So you take this screw off. Okay, I'm just, I'm just doing this for example. Okay. And there's, you can see there's a little screw in there that has a standard blade screw slot. You know, you're going to turn that and that's going to make that bigger or smaller. Okay? So let's just put this back in there. Now that's when you get it in the oven. Okay? Now there is a whole set of instructions that go along with this. This is just an overview. Okay? So, now to convert this, we're going to change out, oops, the spring on the regulator. Okay, and we don't have to change anything else out, but they give us all these extra parts. You know, this guy here, okay, uh, which is a screw. I've already counted the screw in here, okay. Uh, let's say, well, let's take this off first. I'm going to show you, okay. So this is, this is the cover. This is not the adjustment itself. The adjustment itself is inside of here. So you take this guy off. Okay. Inside is the actual adjustment. Now this regulator from the factory is set at three and a half inches of water column. Okay, uh, this regulator is variable from three to five inches of water column, depending on how this is adjusted. And the reason it's adjusted from three to five inches of water column is that maybe you're using this stove at altitude and you need to have it. You know, you need to adjust it for the altitude. So that's why they allow adjustability on here. They also allow adjustability on the pilot generator, okay? So this is a totally professional unit, that's why this is set up this way, okay? Now, I've already counted the number of turns this, this is here. This screw here is actually turned in 12 turns from the top and four and a half turns from the bottom. That gives you the three and a half inches of water column that it's rated at, okay? I'm not worried about that because I'm gonna replace the spring, even though I'm gonna still turn it in 12 turns, I'm gonna do that because this one was set in 12 turns. That does not mean that once I put this in, it's going to give me the 10 inches of water column that I'm looking for out of it, which is what I bored this orifice to. I bored this orifice to work out to where it would give me about 39,000 BTU. That's about what these ovens are rated at, at 10 inches of water column. Okay. The user is going to have to verify with a manometer how much pressure is coming out of this regulator. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go inside there, and we might want to stop here. Okay, so I'm going to turn this out. Okay, I'm going to go, and I already know that it's 12 turns to turn it out. Okay, and I'm not worried about that. I'm just going to go ahead and turn it out. And I don't know if it's going or not. Let's see here. Um, yeah, you know what, stop. Okay, so uh, I had to use a... A, a Phillips head screwdriver, okay, because there's an X here, okay. So I'm just going to go ahead and turn this out, okay. I know that it's it's about 12 turns to get it out. Uh, let me tell you, this is used a standard blade. It's pretty firm because it's gotten a little bit, it's got a little bit of resistance, and it's not because there's any dirt or anything in there. It's just because it's that's the way it is. You got plastic going into aluminum. So I turn this guy out. Like I said, it's about 12 turns, so it's quite a bit of work. Get it out. Turn this guy out. Okay. Pop this guy up in here. Up and out of here. Is that dark? Can we see? Okay, so okay, so there's that. 
there's the spring. Okay, I need to grab the spring out of there. Okay, that's the natural gas spring. Now I'm going to put the propane spring in there. By the way, the propane spring is a lot heavier duty than the natural gas spring, so it's going to put more pressure on the regulator. Okay, that's going to go right back down in the slot. I'm going to put the new one in there. And then I'm going to do it, you know, about 12 turns. And that's about it. So I don't need to do it 12 turns. I just wanted to show that that's the way it was done. I'm going to turn that in 12 turns. I'm going to put the cap on there so that everything's sealed. It's going to go back in the oven. And it's going to be a converted, you know, Honeywell gas control valve. Thanks for watching.